If you play Star Citizen, you should consider buying this ship with your in-game money. Stick around and hear me out, because although the Origin 85X doesn't seem to do much, it can make your game experience so much better. I'm Farrister, and in this video I review the Star Citizen ship, the currently flyable Origin 85X. As with some of the most interesting ships, she's multi-crew capable with a handy passenger seat and is described as a luxury touring ship. For those of you who've seen other ship reviews on this channel, you know the drill by now. This video is split into five sections, starting with a ship tour, assessing combat performance, reviewing handling and visibility, looking at the operating costs before finally summarising. I've included timestamps in the video description to help navigate to each part of the review, and if you're one of the three quarters of people watching who isn't yet subscribed to the channel, you may choose to subscribe to be notified of future videos. Part 1. Ship Tour And you asked to see more of the outside of ships during this segment, and so here is the 85X in all its glory. On the right or starboard side is the ladder leading up to the co-pilot or passenger seat, and on the left or port side you hop up the ladder into the pilot seat. Then it's into the beautiful surrounds of the 85X. Part 2. Combat Performance The Origin 85X is not a combat fighter, but does come armed with four size 1 weapons two on gimbals beneath the wings, and two on a pilot control turret beneath the ship. The hardpoints are also size 1, so you're best off sticking with the gimbals. It's feasible to take on low-risk combat missions with the 85X. Those four size 1 weapons struggle for damage output, but fighting against other small ships, the 85X can hold its own. You will find that firing the weapons in the current patch seems to create a major torque imbalance, and results in the ship being quite hard to control. That said, once you know to expect it, it's still controllable, and if you struggle, just stop firing for a couple of seconds. It is guns only in the 85X, as there are no missile hardpoints, but that's understandable for a ship of this size. There are two size 1 shield generators, which defensively puts the 85X in a more similar position to a fighter than other ships at this size point, such as the Merlin or Pisces. Unusually, if you are looking to fight with an 85X, you'll do well to consider some component upgrades, simply due to the potential power and cooling demands of this ship. Part 3. Handling and Visibility Let's start with talking about visibility, and although the cockpit is an excellent bubble canopy, the seats are a little low down, which means that the dashboard slightly obscures your vision. There's also a little glare on the windowed glass, which is especially noticeable in dark surroundings. But generally speaking, you have good visibility out to the sides and above, which is particularly great if you're treating a passenger to a scenic flight. As far as flight characteristics, the 85X is an absolute pleasure to fly. Highly manoeuvrable, fast, and with a reasonable braking performance, it really doesn't matter if you're in atmosphere or vacuum, the 85X will perform well. Takeoff and landing is easy, which is a real plus, as I expect for many, the most likely use case for the 85X will be to get from A to B quickly, whether that's as a transport, or loading up on a larger ship such as a Carrick or 890 Jump. And A to B quickly is definitely where the 85X shines. With a quantum range of about half the Stantum system, it hasn't got the longest legs, but critically, with an incredibly fast quantum drive as stock. And because of the size of this ship, there's only a really small spool up and cooldown, which makes it one of the fastest ships for traversing the system. And that's potentially with a passenger too. Part 4. Operating Costs because the 85X is a really small ship, your operating costs are also minuscule. 
You'd have to push really hard to have to pay 200 credits for a full refuel and repair, and that's potentially covering some serious distances. Although there's no internal space for storing cargo, which rules out many of the starter missions, the 85X does have a second seat, which means you can potentially make money through picking up other players and transporting them to their destination. And the 85X can do that really well, due to how quick it is in quantum travel and how easy it is to fly. And the 85X can manage smaller combat contracts, it's not as slick an experience as in a fighter, and you'll experience some quite heavy time to kill enemy ships as you ramp up the size of your targets, but it's a fairly forgiving experience even for a mediocre pilot such as your humble reviewer. Part 5. The Verdict In keeping with the Origin style, the 85X is a truly beautiful ship, both inside and out. It's classy and oozes luxurious charm. It's not universally capable, but it flies well and easily, and can fight against smaller ships. That said, it's very rare that you see an 85X on your travels around the verse. It comes bundled with the 890 Jump Space Yacht. In fact, if you were to watch back on my somewhat dated review of the 890 Jump, you'd see that I was flown in as a passenger in the 85X. But although yacht owners get it for free, it's available in-game to buy for around half a million Alpha UEC. And that's a really good buy for one main reason. The 85X is a great way to get from A to B quickly and easily. Because of the tiny size, it's spawnable pretty much anywhere. It's easy to take off and land, and the quantum drive is incredibly quick. And as a small ship, it has a very quick reclaim timer, and it also has a passenger seat for if you wanted to head somewhere with a friend. Add all of that together, and if you own an 85X, it means you can quickly get to wherever you want to be, wherever your main ship is. And what I love about that so much is that that's pretty much what the 85X is intended for. It's not a mothership, it's not a do-everything ship, it's a ship to fly you on a journey quickly and in style. So for the in-game price, I'd absolutely recommend this as a purchase for any Star Citizen player who uses another ship to earn their money in-game. It's not a ship that comes up for sale out of game very often, and so the price information for Pledge is a little more sketchy. You might expect it to be about $50 which is a lot to pay, especially when the in-game price is so cheap, so I'd suggest sticking to the in-game, but I really would recommend it. I'd love to know if you agree with the verdict, especially if you're going to launch up Star Citizen right now and go buy it from Lawville. And if you enjoyed the video, you might consider clicking the like button. You may also be interested in my review of the Origin 300i. Otherwise, thank you for watching.